How you doing? It's Ryan with 1075 Emergency Vehicles. What we're going to be going over today is a different build for us. We're going to be taking this school bus and transforming it into the Bergen County's new mass casualty bus. What we've done so far is we've got the donor bus stripped out from the equipment that's going to be into it. And then we've got where we're in the process of prepping this bus to have new warning lights, paint, body, graphics, generator, air conditioning units, and some other cool things added to it. What we've done with the inside of the bus, what we're starting with, is you can see that we've taken all the benches out and then they're working on removing the seating so that we were able to get access to the floor and then remove all the trim so that we can replace the floor with a coin roll flooring that's designed for ambulances and other specialty vehicles to provide a seamless appearance in here. And then what we're also gonna be doing is removing the lighting. We're gonna be cutting the roof sections out to install three rooftop air conditioning and heating units. And then we're also going to be removing the air conditioning unit in the back that's going to give us a flip up door to allow patients to be brought in easier on stretchers. So working with not a newer piece of equipment, you can run into some issues with things rusted, things not working correctly, things that aren't fitting well. The bus could have been in an accident and it could cause, have damage and stuff be out of alignment. So you get into a, a bigger project there's a lot of unknowns that you can walk into and you need to be able to adapt and overcome those and continue with, along with the project so that it comes out the way that you intended it to. Okay so what we've done with the bus so far is we've got all the seats taken out of it after we had to cut most of the bolts off the seats because they were rusted what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be removing all the floor and all the trim. We're going to be repurposing some of the trim after we replace the flooring with a coin roll flooring that's designed for ambulances. Um, what we're then going to be doing is we're going to be bringing in the generator and we're going to be roughing out the exhaust and the air intake for that and working on the control compartment for that. And then we're going to start laying out the stretcher compartments so that way we can plan out where the generator is going to be and then where the command work center area is going to be that's in this section here. Now that we've got the flooring stripped out, we're able to see the floor. We're prepping it in order to lay in the new floor. We've also exposed the rear heater unit that we're going to be removing so that way we have more access to all the equipment. And what we've done is we've started laying out where our seating is going to go, um, our stretchers, how that's going to all work out so that way we can get to the back and get our O2 tanks and our ramps installed. And then what we've done is we've disassembled the area around the air conditioning unit. So that way we can decharge it from the Freon and remove it. And that way we can cut the opening bigger and put the lift up hatch so that they can bring patients in through the back door on the ramp. Taking a, a used piece of equipment like this is it's easier to justify the expense. You're not adding the cost of a new chassis into a project like this because it's not necessarily going to be used all the time. So taking something that still has good service in it and is in good shape and then putting some money into it and upgrading the equipment and everything, it it's a a worthwhile investment because you're not really taking that chassis price and adding that into it. The cost of that ownership has pretty much been spread out already over the lifetime of that school bus of however long they used it.
So just to follow up with what's going on here, we've got all the warning lights removed previously from when it was the bus. We have all the holes drilled for all the new scene lights and warning lights in the back. And then we've got the holes that we need to fill before the truck goes into the body shop. What we've also done is since we've removed the air conditioning unit, we have the rear opening cut. We're going to be fabricating a lift up door that allows the patients to be brought in on the gurneys easier so the people that are carrying that aren't going to hit their heads because we do have a ramp unit that's going to be installed in here. Um, and what we're working on is getting the license plate lighting moved and then adding in the other DOT lighting. We've got these marked out to get upgraded to LED. So what we've done is we've removed all the graphics from the side. We have all of our light mounts mounted up. We've got all the holes drilled and we've got wire poles set up so that way this can go to paint and we can do the color change on the bus. And then you can see down below we also have all the warning light holes cut so that when it comes back from paint you don't have to worry about drilling into the fresh paint. Okay, so on the front we have our front warning lights mounted off. We've got the holes that we need to fill in and um, body fill before they go to paint. We've got all the upper warning light holes drilled. We've got all the graphics removed from there. We've installed new turn signals onto this, moving them from here down to there, allowing us to mount our warning lights there. We've also got the front bumper removed, and then we also have all of our um, uh, bus mirror lights taken off for now that we're going to be cleaning and repainting so that way they're freshened up for when the bus goes into service. What we've done is we've got our rear ear cord lines removed and disconnected along with all the wiring going to get pulled back. We've test fit all the gurney mounts that we've removed from the old bus and we've got them laid out so that we're able to determine where our air conditioning units are going to be going and then we have all of our interior lighting upgrades getting ready to go in. We have the first air conditioning unit going in, we have the other unit here, and then we've got the hole cut in back here for the rear one. Customer's biggest request was that after had been using this bus at a couple different incidents was that it be able to run on its own, not necessarily having to have the motor running and having the ability to uh, heat and run air conditioning if the bus was plugged in in its storage area because what they had found in the middle of winter trying to go as to support a large fire that had happened um, it took a very long time for the bus to actually get warm and its purpose really wasn't available because of how cold it was and that the inside of it really wasn't getting warm at all so their biggest thing was having that ability to keep it warm in the winter time and also possibly keep one of the air conditioners running so we developed uh, a transfer switch system that allows us to run one of the air conditioning units and we also put baseboard heating in it and use that stuff while the bus is plugged in so that they can put it inside the storage unit they can turn it on when they need to they can charge the battery so the unit will always be ready to go and that really wasn't necessarily so challenging but it's just getting everything there so it works correctly as intended <laughs>
So just to recap on where we are so far, the bus has gone to paint. We have done all the body work to it. We've done our full color change into white. And what we've done is we've began installing all the emergency equipment back onto the bus and doing all of the new electrical wiring harness and tying into the systems and checking that. Um, with the floor being installed, we are now ready to go into the generator and finish up the uh, electrical tie-ins along with the fuel system tie-ins and then we're able to fire everything up and get everything tested. out the AC and fabricated the back door the back door is was severely damaged and it looks like they tried to tweak it so we had to kind of not adjust our plan but work around kind of repairing the back door so that way everything fit well to begin with it didn't leak um, just dealing with a lot of the rusted bolts and stuff like that that held the seats in that was time consuming more than we anticipated with it but other than that, everything has been moving along fairly well. so far with the bus project. We've got all the O2 lines ran to all the stations. We've got the O2 bottles secured inside. We've got the generator mounted, plumbed, and wired, and we're working on its cover and its uh, ventilation for that unit. We've got all the stretchers installed. We've got our seats cut down for different riding positions. And then up front, we're working on our command area, our workstation, that's going to have a whiteboard, radio, uh, television with HDMI inputs, and all the 110 and 12 volt distribution for everything that's going on in this project. So going into a project like this, you need a wide variety of knowledge and experienced staff to get something like this done because we're tying into fuel systems, we're welding, we're doing body work. Um, we're getting stuff prepped for paint. We're doing a lot of fabricating. So having the machinery, having the ability to fabricate all this stuff in-house and not have to outsource it um, is a, a very big plus because it's, it's a lot of time and a lot of energy that goes into small parts and have, doing small batch runs and having to outsource that is very expensive to do. Um, our staff was able to basically cut this bus up and add the door for the stretchers to come in, refabricate the door, fill in all the holes from where the uh, bus emergency lights were, uh, make some repairs to the bus to do that, tie into the, the diesel fuel tank system, um, and then tie into the bus's electrical system and add on to that for all the emergency equipment and then also the uh, heating air conditioning. The bus is in its final stages, we're quality controlling everything, we're double checking all of our work, checking all the systems and loading all the systems to make sure everything is going to function properly, then it's time to detail the vehicle, and then it's time to deliver it to the customer.
after a couple hundred man hours, the finished product's behind us. We couldn't be happier with the way that it came out and we can't wait to deliver it to the customer and get their reaction from it and get their feedback. If you guys are interested in a vehicle like this or any other large projects, please give us a call. Check out our website. Check out our social media pages.